and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So tonight we're going to take a look at creating a chat GPT client for your Linux desktop. The instructions are for Debian distributions. Now, as you know, my channel is 99% uh, Debian focused or Debian based uh, focus, I should say. And this is a fairly easy and straightforward process. Uh, we're going to be copying and pasting some commands. So there's no coding involved in this. And uh, I'm going to walk you through step by step. I also have the set of instructions that I'm going to upload to my GitHub. And I'll put that link in the description below. That way, if you uh, aren't taking notes or watching this on your phone and you do want to try this, uh, you can go to my GitHub and download it, so on and so forth. Um, we will be using a virtual machine for this. And I have uh, moved away, or I should say I'm moving away from VirtualBox over to GNOME Boxes. So I do have an instance of GNOME Boxes up and running with Pop! OS. So we're good to go on this. And I actually have a folder up here with the instructions and the logo that we're going to be using. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to offer a disclaimer here that Native Fire is no longer supported by the developer. Uh, in fact, if we take a look at the GitHub page, uh, the repository has been archived since 2023. And the, the actually the last update was two years ago, and that was an update to Electron 25. So it's no longer supported. Now with that, there are some security risks that you need to consider when using this type of application uh, to create your client. And so let's go over some of those security risks real quick. Uh, first of all, um, Native Fire wraps itself in a, in a live website. It uses an Electron container for that. Uh, if the website itself is compromised, then of course, Native Fire is compromised, which means you are potentially compromised. Uh, there is no sandboxing. So Native, uh, Native Fire does not isolate the web page or the web app uh, beyond what Electron offers. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, it doesn't have any uh, HTTPS enforcement. If the URL that you are uh, using doesn't force HTTPS, then uh, Native Fire won't either. And keep in mind as well that uh, Native Fire apps, um, depending on their configuration, they can access your clipboard contents, uh, various files on your systems, and uh, JavaScript APIs. So keep that in mind. So the bottom line is um, I would not recommend using Native Fire to create clients for your brokerage account, your bank account, and things like that. So let's take a closer look at um, the risks that we are facing by using this. So uh, reading this AI overview, using Native Fire to create a desktop app for chat GPT is generally not considered a security risk as Native Fire itself is a tool for wrapping web applications, not for altering the security of chat GPT itself. However, it's important to understand the limitations and security implications of both Native Fire and chat GPT while using them together. Uh, functionality. Um, of course, we talked a little bit about uh, Native Fire being a tool that allows you to package a website like ChatGPT uh, into a desktop application, and that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, security. Native Fire itself does not directly compromise the security of the website it wraps. However, the security uh, of the resulting desktop app depends on the security of the original website. Uh, you can uh, Google this yourself. Uh, is Native Fire secure for ChatGPT? And of course, the AI prompt will uh, spit out all this information. So if you want to follow through with this, please be my guest. So I have a chat GPT client installed on my machine, and I do use it um, mainly for simple stuff, asking questions and whatnot. Um, I actually used it yesterday to create the logo that we're going to be using for our launcher, uh, the launcher that you uh, saw right here. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, get started with this. All right, so we're in Pop! OS. So actually, we're in um, GNOME Boxes, and we are in an instance of Pop! OS. So let's go ahead and log into it. And I have the folder up here with the instructions that I will put up on the GitHub, as well as the logo you can see here. So let's go ahead and open up the instructions. And we'll close this out for now. I'm going to move the instructions over to the left. All right, so I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to expand this out a little bit. There we go. And as you know, the first thing we do in Linux, um, anytime we're installing an app or doing any type of work, we want to sudo apt update. Hit enter, put in our password. Let that do its thing. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and clear that out. Now we need to install NPM. And what NPM is, it's a package manager for basically for JavaScript that allows you to install and uh, manage dependencies. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that now. We're going to copy and paste this. 
sudo apt install npm paste and hit enter and hit y and let it do its thing it may take a moment or two so i'll go ahead and fast forward this all right now we're finished so now we can go ahead and install a native fire so we'll copy and paste that command as well paste and hit enter okay so now this error does pop up don't let it discourage you uh, this is common i have installed this on both my laptop and my main desktop i got this error on the desktop for for whatever reason i did not get the error on my uh, my laptop so we're going to ignore this for now and we're going to move on to the next command which is a curl command so we're going to go ahead and copy that and I have some comments here in the instructions that if you get the errors about out of date version, then you copy and paste the curl command that's directly below it. Paste it in, hit enter. Let it do its thing and it's done. Uh, now we need to activate the version that we just installed. So to do that, we're going to copy this export command. And we're going to paste that in our terminal and hit enter. Done. Now we're going to copy the source. Rinse and repeat, paste and hit enter. Good to go. So now let's check our version. So to check the version, you're going to type in or copy and paste NVM space hyphen hyphen version. And we're at 0.39.7. So I have a note here saying that it should be 0 0.39.07 or 0 0.7 as of 5 14 2025. All right, so now we're going to install the Node.js version, and we're going to install 18. So NVM install 18, copy and paste. Hit enter. And we are finished. Now we're going to use 18, NVM 18, copy and paste. Boom, there we go. Now let's go ahead and set the alias default. Copy and paste. Hit enter, and we're good to go. So we have default uh, 18, 18.20.8. .8. And then we need to confirm it. So let's check the node. I'm not going to copy and paste that. I'm just going to type it in. Node, uh, node space hyphen V. And we are at version 18.20.8. .8. And let's go ahead and check the NPM version. So we're going to type in NPM space hyphen V. And we're at 10.82. So I have a note here uh, letting you know that there should be version 18 uh, for Node and version and 9 or 10 or above for NPM. Okay, so now we're going to reinstall uh, Native Fire since we got the error uh, our first attempt. So we're just going to copy and paste the NPM install uh, hyphen G Native Fire command and then hit enter. And we're good to go. We're going to redo the NVM alias default. 18, copy and paste. Hit enter. And we're good to go still. And let's check our native fire version. And we're looking for 52 um, as of 514.25, which was yesterday. And we're at 52. So we are good to go. All right. So I have another note here to create the client. Uh, note uh, change directory or change directory into the directory that you want the client to be installed before running. So uh, when we do the installation, it's whatever directory that you're currently in, uh, at Junior, at Pop! OS, I'm in my home directory, that's where it's going to install it. So if you want to put this in your uh, documents directory or wherever, go ahead and change directory into that, uh, that directory now and go ahead and move forward from there. So I'm going to leave it in my home directory. So I'm just going to copy this command, native fire, HTTPS and so on, and we're going to paste it, hit enter, and let it do its thing. And the build has been finalized. All right, so now we need to check and see if the folder was created in the directory that we chose. So in my case, uh, I left it in my home directory. So let's go ahead and open it up. And there it is, chat GPT hyphen Linux hyphen x64. So let's go ahead and open that folder up. And while we're here, right click inside, make new folder or new folder and type in icons, lowercase, hit enter and create the folder. So this is where we're gonna store our launcher icon. 
So I'm going to open up the folder where my icon is stored, my PNG. I'm going to right click and copy it, come over here, and I'm going to paste it inside this folder, and we're good to go. We are going to need that here very soon. Go ahead and close this out. Now we can move on. All right, so now we need to go ahead and check to make sure the app works, that it's functional. So to do that, we need to go back to our folder that we were just in, chat GPT Linux x64, right click, open in terminal, and just type in dot forward slash chat GPT. It is case sensitive, then hit enter. And there we go. So we are, so here is our, our chat GPT client. And we can check it to see if it works. Why are Russian blue so clingy? At least mine is. And you can see it works just fine. Strong bond with one person, sensitive, intelligent, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And we can go ahead and close out our folder. And we can go ahead and close out this uh, terminal instance. All right, now we need to create the launcher because if we go into our show applications, there is no icon to launch our client. All right, so to do that, we are going to come down to our next set of instructions and that is going to involve using Nano. So we're gonna copy that command, come over here and paste it, hit enter, and there we go. Now uh, we're gonna paste the uh, following instructions in the file that we are now working on. So we need to copy the entire thing and paste it over here. Now, this is very important. Um, the executable and the icon, make sure that your path is correct and make sure that you have name, make sure that your the name of your PNG is the name being listed here, uh, .png. So in this case, um, it is not Rave, it is actually Junior which is the name of this virtual machine and the Russian blue we just looked up. So go ahead and change that to make sure that's accurate. All right, once you are satisfied that this is all correct, then go ahead and hit Control X, hit Y, yes to save, and then hit Enter, and we're good to go. Now we go ahead and make it executable. And we're going to copy the chmod command, and we are going to paste that in the terminal and hit enter. And we are good to go, so let's go ahead and exit out. Let's go ahead and close out of our instructions. Well, we save that. All right, so let's go ahead and check to make sure application is there in our show applications. And sure enough, it is, chat GPT. Let's go ahead and click on it, make sure it works. And it works fine. Now, there's one more caveat to this. Uh, when you click on login, do not try to use your continue with Google option uh, because Google will block it. There is a workaround for that. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video because quite frankly, I haven't quite figured it out myself to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but go ahead and log in with your email address and your password and you should be fine. So that is if you have a chat GPT account, that's how you get into it. But let's go ahead and test it out real quick just to make sure everything's working fine. And I'll what time is it in Japan? And there we go. So it works, it works fine. All right, so that wraps up the video. So I have walked you through creating a chat GPT client uh, for your Pop OS or your Linux Mint or your Ubuntu uh, installation. So I hope you found this helpful. And I thank you all for watching. And if you did get some value out of this, please consider uh, leaving a like because it does help me out and helps the channel grow. And I hope you stay safe out there. Have a good one. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.